Welcome into the 8 o'clock hour of KPRC 2 Plus Now. I'm Zach Lajway. We have a lot to get to this morning, but we're starting with this, the stifling heat. This is a major issue, very concerning for those waiting for their electricity to come back on. Dan Riley with National Weather Service is here with a closer look at the summer's heat index. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, talk to us, Dan, uh, about what is heat index and how does this differ from our actual temperature? Heat index takes into account the humidity as well. Mm. Uh, so the body can cool itself more efficiently if the air is dry. If the air is very humid and it's very hot as well in terms of temperature, uh, it can be especially dangerous. So the heat index, sometimes you'll hear referred to as a feels like or apparent temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really is reflecting uh, how efficiently your body can cool and how dangerous the heat can be, the combination of heat mm -hmm. and humidity. And so we just said, you know, the actual temperature is 81, but that feels like temperature is 91 degrees. Exactly. So, you know, as far as your body's ability to cool itself, it's more like a 91 degree day. And that heat index probably going up uh, up to 100 or so. Uh, so be wow. especially careful out there. And I know, Dan, more than 100,000 people are still without power. The climbing temperatures this week, this really poses a, a, a very dangerous situation, dangerous conditions for so many. Talk to us about signs of heat exhaustion and then, of course, heat stroke. Right, uh, heat exhaustion, uh, you know, we're looking at dizziness, uh, extreme thirst, heavy sweating, nausea, uh, weakness. Uh, that would be heat exhaustion. As things get even more severe, uh, you might see confusion, uh, even becoming unconscious, you know, and then we're on the verge perhaps of even heat stroke. So it is something to take very, very seriously. You know, if you reach those uh, heat stroke levels uh, or even uh, uh, heat exhaustion, you, you may really need to consider medical me, immediate medical uh, attention. Yeah, uh, all very dangerous. And of course, this is the time of year when we begin to remind uh, our viewers of checking in on your loved ones often, you know, double, triple checking that back seat for a child or a pet to make sure there's nobody else in the car. It's all of these reminders. It's these conversations that can really make a difference when it comes to people's health and safety. Absolutely. And check on your neighbors, too. Uh, you know, there are some populations that are especially at risk. Uh, the elderly, uh, newborns, mm -hmm. uh, people of, of like people with chronic illnesses. So, uh, you know, do your best to stay cool. Uh, but also uh, think about your neighbors, too, that may be even more vulnerable. Dan, I want to ask you before I let you go, uh, what are ways we can cool ourselves if our home is still without working air conditioning? Yeah, that's a great question. That's tough. You know, you can you can take a shower. Uh, you want to have some air movement in the home. Uh, you know, a fan would be ideal, but without electricity, that even that could be mm -hmm. a problem. So. Um, you, you know, it, it, it can be very difficult. You know, you want to, to, to keep, uh, keep the, the uh, blinds drawn if you can, keep the outdoor sunlight from heating up the home, uh, but try to get some sort of air movement in there as well. And if you can take a break, if you have even a, a, a shop or a mall or uh, some air conditioned uh, commercial area that you can get to, even taking a break there every so often uh, is helpful. And of course, staying hydrated uh, during these days when we're experiencing high heat. Yeah, you want to stay hydrated. Exactly right. Also, OK, Dan Riley, as always, great chatting with you. Thank you for your time this morning. You bet. Be safe.